On my 12th birthday, my dad announced to me that he was going to take me backpacking out in the Long Trail in Vermont. And of course, I was really excited and I wanted to go right away. But my dad said, we first had to get prepared. And it would take time. We had to be ready for this strenuous effort of hiking up and down the mountains. So we spent the next five months planning and preparing. We bought books on backpacking, purchased the right equipment and clothing. We even spent several months conditioning our bodies and our, our muscles taking long training hikes. Finally, after all the waiting and preparation, the day came for our adventure. Our intense preparation helped to make carrying the 40 pounds of gear a little easier. And the mountains seemed to be a bit lower and the valleys less steep. Like hiking in Vermont, the road system in the ancient world was often rough and very difficult to travel. There were no airplanes, no super highways. Travel for most ordinary people was on foot. It was difficult, very strenuous. The exception would be if a king was coming to visit. And he would send out his emissary to announce to everyone to prepare the roads for his coming. The stones would be removed. The curves would be straightened out. Ruts filled in. Hills were even lowered and valleys filled in to make way for the king so he could have this easy pathway to where he was going. And when he arrived at his destination, there would be a great celebration in Latin. The word for this celebration is Adventus, or in English, Advent. For centuries, the people of Israel have been waiting and preparing in hopeful expectation for the promised Messiah, a king who would rescue them from their oppressors and bring Israel back to its greatness and glory. In our gospel passage today, John heralds the arrival of a king that all Israel has been waiting for and preparing for. Jesus Christ, who will rescue them, not from Rome, as they had hoped, but from something far more important, the chains and bonds of sin. John beckons them and us two millennium later, to straighten out the pathways and winding roads of our life. John is the herald of God's coming salvation, his Adventus, his advent, his coming, and soon his arrival, not just to Israel, but to all of us. How do we, you and I prepare for the coming of the Lord, the King of the universe. Is it in the hustle and bustle of the malls? Is it in the presence, the tree, the cards, the tinsels, the parties? And certainly these are all nice and good and something we should take part in. But it's not really the way we prepare for the King. It's not Christmas, but Christ we are preparing and waiting for. St. Bernard tells us about the three comings of Jesus. The first in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, which we will celebrate in about three weeks. The second is at the end of time for the final judgment. And the third is in the here and now through the sacrament of the Eucharist and in the prayerful awakening of our hearts. Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come, is at the very heart of our Advent preparation. 
only by making ourselves ready and prepared to encounter Christ today can we truly make ourselves ready to celebrate his birth and to encounter him at the end of time. And so how do we do this? How do we prepare the roadway for Christ? Perhaps we can consider Advent a season of Christian roadworks, a time to level out the mountains and valleys of our lives. Maybe our mountains are puffed up with too much of the things of the world, possessions, power, pride, wealth. Perhaps the valleys need to be filled in with more prayer, a good confession, or time with the Lord and Eucharistic adoration. Amid the stress and the strain of COVID, Advent gives us an opportunity to renew, to deepen, to strengthen our relationship with God by stepping back from the preoccupations and distractions of the world, we can build a spiritual highway to make it easy for Christ to enter into our lives. Like preparing for a strenuous hiking trip, we are invited to carefully prepare our hearts, our minds, our muscles, our bones, so that the incarnate word of God Jesus Christ can seep into our very being. Advent invites us to look not just within us, but also outside of ourselves. By comforting the lonely, consoling those who grieve, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, providing clothing and shelter for the needy, Or maybe it's something as small as a smile or a kind word to a harried, overworked store clerk. Advent is about Christ, Emmanuel, the God who is with us. If you and I make Christ a priority, we will make our lives an ongoing Advent. We will live waiting watching, preparing, and joyful hope for Christ to enter our lives and to be with us. So, let us prepare. Let us make the walkway to the front door of our life straight. Let us put out the welcome mat and stand at the door, holding it wide open, inviting him to come into our lives with the words, Come, come, Lord Jesus, come, come into my home. God bless you.